Hello everybody. Today I would like to talk to you about a triple exponential smoothing. So last time we were talking about a double exponential smoothing. Okay. Today we're going to talk about a triple exponential smoothing. Now, uh, triple exponential smoothing is used uh, when there is seasonality in a time series. Okay. So triple exponential smoothing assumes that uh, there is a level, there is a trend, and uh, there is seasonality. So all these three components are accounted for in triple exponential smoothing. Also, uh, triple exponential smoothing is called uh, Hold Winters method, another name, um, and since triple exponential smoothing has three components, we use three different smoothing constants, uh, alpha, beta, and gamma, between zero and one. And uh, each period, each season repeats itself, and each season has S periods. So for example, uh, if you're looking at uh, a year that repeats itself, an annual pattern that repeats itself, uh, there will be 12 periods in an annual pattern. Or if you're looking at uh, quarterly data, so uh, each uh, pattern that repeats itself each year will have four periods, okay? And so on and so forth. There can be two types of seasonality. One is additive seasonality, which looks like this, and one is multiplicative seasonality. So the difference is the way they look. So uh, in additive seasonality, the ups and downs, the amplitude okay, uh, of the seasonality doesn't change. So the, the difference between peaks and valleys of seasonal pattern does, does not change over time. However, in a multiplicative seasonality pattern, you have kind of like a funnel shape where the ups and downs start small and then you have greater ups and downs as time goes on. Okay? So we're going to study both types of seasonality. So the model looks like this. Okay. So there is a, uh, a level, okay, L sub t, and then to the level we add uh, a trend, okay. So that's our baseline, okay, and then we multiply uh, that baseline with a uh, smoothing factor. So it looks like this, okay. Uh, so this is the level, okay? This is our starting point. And then we have uh, a trend, okay? So a trend takes us from this level to the next level, to the next level, to the next level, etc. So this is our baseline. And around this, we add this seasonality pattern by either adding or multiplying a factor, okay? So suppose, so now for this, let's say this is uh, period t, this is t plus 1, okay? So to get to here, what we do is we start with the level plus we add the trend, which brings us here. And then we uh, multiply, so this is lt plus tt times this factor, seasonality factor, for this particular period, and it brings us down here, okay? So uh, this point is achieved by taking into account level, trend, plus the seasonality factor, okay? So the next period, let's say this is uh, the first period of the, the repeating pattern, the second period, so again, we start at the level, we apply the trend to 
twice times the seasonality factor, which brings us to F uh, sub t plus 2. And uh, let's say for the third season, third period in the season, L sub t plus 3 times trend uh, times the seasonality factor. Okay. And the same thing for the fourth uh, period in the season. Okay. Now, uh, if we want to go one step further, one more period into the future, we'll start at uh, the level, add uh, five trends, and then use this seasonality factor again. Because the pattern will go S1, S2, S3, S4, and then start S1, S2, S3, S4 again. So this pattern, the seasonality factors are repeatedly applied. Okay. So in the case of additive seasonality, instead of multiplying, we just add a certain uh, seasonality factor instead of multiplying. So again, it may look like this. So uh, we start with the level plus trend, which takes us here, and then uh, plus the seasonality factor. The seasonality factor can be positive or negative, depending on whether you, you're going under or over the baseline. Similarly here, okay. So, how does the algorithm work? So we start with initial values. So as in all exponential smoothing, uh, we need to have uh, initial values. We need an initial value for level, an initial value for trend, and initial value for uh, the uh, seasonality factor, and then uh, we generate a forecast based on, the, on these initial values. After we have the forecast, we observe the actual data, actual demand, okay? And the difference between forecast and actual demand gives us an error term. And we use that error term to update the level. After that, we update trend. After that, we update the seasonality factor. Okay. So uh, after we, up we update level, trend, and seasonality, we can generate the next forecast. After we generate the next forecast, we observe actual demand, and we update level, trend, seasonality again, etc. So. We're going to start, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you an example with a, a quarterly uh, time series where the pattern repeats itself every four periods, every four quarters, the pattern starts over again. So, so every season uh, has four periods, so season one uh, goes over one period one, two, three, four, and then season two starts, five, six, seven, eight, and then season three, nine, 10, 11, uh, 12, etc. cetera. So uh, let's suppose uh, we are at the end of uh, season one, okay? So we, ha we have observed periods one, two, three, and four, okay? Now, uh, we're at the beginning of season two, okay? And our initial values are these, okay? So, let's try to uh, forecast. So, with these values, what we can do is, uh, so, uh, in season two, uh, L4 and uh, T4, Okay. That's going to take us to the baseline times, we're going to use seasonality factor for period 5, which, for which we're going to go back 
to the previous uh, season's uh, first period. Okay, this is the first five is the first period of season two. We're gonna go back to the first season, uh, first period of season one, okay, S one. Similarly, for uh, period six, we're gonna go back four periods. Uh, uh, for periods seven and eight. And then we're going to observe actual demand. Uh, update uh, these formulas. Okay, I'm going to talk about all of these formulas. Okay. Uh, here's uh, our time series. Okay. Uh, our periods, our observed demands. So, uh, periods one through four, let's say, are uh, 2006 quarters one through four, first um, uh, season, right? And then the same pattern starts all over again. Uh, at five, six, seven, and eight, season two, okay? So we have observed uh, the level and trend, initial values, okay? And then we have the seasonality factors. So what we can do is, if we know level four and trend four, okay? Uh, we, and then we know the seasonality factors, we can calculate the forecast for period five. So how do we calculate F5? Okay, so um, to calculate F5, we use this formula. So we start at 70, okay, plus, uh, 10,000, 70,000 plus 10,000, okay? That takes us to the trend line, okay? And times the seasonality factor, okay? So for the seasonality factor, so this is the first period in the season, we need to go back to the first period of the previous season, okay? Because S1, S2, S3, S4, are going to repeat themselves, okay? So uh, 70,000 plus 10,000 times 0.83, okay? That's our forecast for period five. So uh, graphically, we start here at period four. This is our trend. T4, so 70,000 plus 10,000 uh, 10, takes us to 80,000. This is the trend line. Times the seasonality factor, 0.83, takes us uh, to our forecast, 66,400. Okay. So, now, the next thing we need to do is we need to update level, trend, and seasonality. Okay. So uh, the actual demand was 72,913. Okay. Let me show you this graphically. Okay. So, so this is the actual demand observed demand, okay? Now, given this seasonality factor, for instance, uh, S5 minus 4, S1, okay? Now, what does this actual demand correspond to in terms of the trend line, okay? Uh, this has level, trend, and seasonality in it, Let's remove seasonality from this so that we go back to the trend line. Okay. 
So to remove seasonality, we divide this by the seasonality factor of 0.83. Okay. So that gives us, so this is the actual uh, observed demand divided by 0.83. We, we remove seasonality. Without seasonality, we should be here at 87,847. So the trend line corresponding to the actual, the point on the trend line corresponding to this actual demand is 87,847. Okay. However, our trend line estimate was uh, 70,000 plus 10,000, 80,000. So our forecast was, we thought we were going to be at 80,000 on the trend line. However, this actual demand tells us that we should be actually at 87,847. Okay. So, uh, by dividing this uh, by the seasonality factor, this is actually where we should be on the trend line. Okay? And the difference is our error term. Okay. So, so, so this is the error term. Uh, this is actual divided by seasonality. This is uh, level plus trend. The difference is the error term. And this is alpha. I'm, I've just picked uh, easy numbers to work with. Uh, 0.5 times the error term. We add this to 80,000. Okay. And this is the updated level. So graphically, oops. yes. So so this is where we should. Uh, yes. So this is the updated level. So we went from uh, L four to L five level 4 to level 5, okay? And um, so after updating level, okay, so this is our updated level. Now, uh, in one period, our level went from 70,000 to 83,923. So the actual difference between two consecutive levels was 11,962. That's our actual trend, okay? However, uh, we were under the impression that uh, the trend was 10,000. So uh, we were thinking that, okay, we're gonna go up by 10,000. However, uh, actual demand showed us that the actual increase was 11,000 something, okay? So then uh, we need to update uh, the, uh, the trend, okay? Uh, okay, so, so the actual increase was uh, 13,000 and we were thinking we're going to increase by 10,000. So the difference between 10,000 and this is the error term okay. times 0.5. This is beta. Okay. And we update the trend like this. Okay. And the updated, uh, updated trend T5 is this. 
okay, 11,962. Again, uh, in graphical terms, T4 was 10,000. The actual difference between L4 and L5 is 13,923. And the difference between these two numbers is the error term, which we use to update the trend. And the new trend, T5, is uh, 11,962. So after updating the level and updating trend, okay, uh, what we can do is we can update the seasonality. Okay, so for period five, we were going back to period one. Okay, so let's use uh, periods, period one seasonality to update uh, period five's seasonality. Okay, so what was the actual seasonality okay. so uh, the actual demand was uh, so first of all first of all remember what is let's remember what is seasonality seasonality takes us from the trend line to the actual okay so what is the uh, trend line? Trend line is this uh, green star. And then the actual is this. Okay. How do we go from this trend line, actual trend line, to actual demand? That is the actual seasonality. Okay. Seasonality takes us from the trend line to actual demand. The actual trend line was this, and this is the actual demand. So we need to uh, divide the actual uh, demand by actual trend line. Okay? So 72,913 divided by. Uh, Okay, I stand corrected. Trend line L5. Okay. So L5, 83,000. Okay. So that gives us uh, uh, 0.87. Okay. Uh, actual demand divided by L5. Okay. This is the actual. Uh, seasonality factor. However, we used previous seasons uh, seasonality factor and the difference is the error term here and this is gamma 0.5 is gamma and we update uh, S1, the first period seasonality factor by this error term and this is the updated seasonality factor for period five. Okay. So we calculated actual seasonality minus the previous seasonality that we used. And we used this error term to update the previous seasonality factor. And we have the new seasonality factor uh, for the first period of the season. So let's do one more period. Let's do period six. Uh, period six is the second period in a four season, season pattern, four season pattern that repeats itself every four season. So if we look at uh, forecast six, F6, so we need L5 as a starting point and then we need uh, T5 to take us to the trend line, 
times the seasonality factor. Okay, so uh, L5 plus P5. So this is our trend line, the point on the trend line. Okay, times. So this is the second period in the season. So we go back to the second season in the previous season, okay? And that's 1.09, and this is the forecast for period six, okay? So we obtain the forecast for period six by looking at period five, and then for seasonality, we go back four periods. So once we have the forecast, what can we do? Uh, we then observe the actual demand. Okay, this is the actual demand. So using the actual demand, we can go back to the uh, trend line. How do we go from the actual demand to the trend line? We divide the actual demand uh, by the uh, seasonality factor. Okay. So, uh, actual demand, 103,000, divided by the uh, seasonality factor, okay. actual trend line. However, uh, our predicted trend line was L5 plus P5, okay? So, and the difference is the error term. This is alpha because we're updating the level, okay? So the updated level will be this, okay? Plus the error term. And the updated level, L6, will be this, 95,350. Okay. So, since we have the updated uh, level, uh, so this is L6, uh, then the next thing, step is to update the trend. Okay. Now, trend was 11,962, okay, uh, T5. However, what's the actual trend? What's the actual increase from period 5 to period 6? That's the actual trend. And the difference between the actual and the forecast will be the error term. So, uh, so the difference between alpha, L6 and L5 actual increase minus this predicted increase, okay? So this is the error term times beta. We use beta because we're uh, updating the trend, okay? The updated trend, T6, is this. So once we have updated the trend, the last thing we need to update is the uh, seasonality factor. So we use uh, 1.09, okay? However, uh, the actual seasonality factor takes us from the actual demand to the uh, trend line, okay? So what's the seas actual seasonality factor here? Demand divided by the seasonality. Uh, demand divided by the trend line, okay? 103,271 actual demand divided by the level, okay? So this is the trend line and it's 1.08.
and our predicted uh, seasonality factor was 1.09. This is the error term. This is gamma for updating seasonality. And, and I round it, and it uh, looks like this 1.09. Okay. So this is the updated seasonality factor for period two in a four period season that repeats itself. And uh, as an exercise, you can try to uh, reproduce these numbers by hand, so you have uh, a sense of how this works. And uh, there can be some uh, rounding errors, so don't worry about getting the exact So, in the previous example, we've looked at a uh, multiplicative uh, time series. However, uh, there can be also additive uh, seasonality. So, the uh, procedure is exactly the same. Uh, the only difference is, instead of multiplying uh, the seasonality, we add uh, the seasonality factor. Uh, here, there's a uh, cross side, it should be uh, a uh, uh, summation side. Okay. It should be a plus. Okay. So here's an example. Uh, the numbers are slightly different. Again, uh, we're at the end of the first season. Uh, we're at the beginning of the second season, which is period five. Okay. So we have the level and the trend, okay? To forecast level, I'm sorry, to, to forecast period five, uh, we start with the level plus trend, 140, okay? And then we add the seasonality factor, which is five, okay? So level plus trend plus seasonality factor is our forecast, okay? So then we uh, observe demand. So the actual demand is 175, okay? So then we need to update level, trend, and seasonality. So to update the, the level, we look the, at the actual demand and deseasonalize it remove seasonality uh, from 175. What is seasonality? The seasonality we used was 5, the seasonality factor. So we just remove 5 from 175. Okay. So when we remove seasonality factor from the actual demand, uh, that takes us to the trend. <coughs> That leads us to the trend line. Okay. So uh, the difference between the trend line and, and our predicted trend line. So our trend line was 100 plus 40. Okay. And this difference is the error term. And this is alpha. Okay. So we update the uh, trend line uh, L5 and we find uh, 155. So this is the updated level, okay, 155. So we have updated the level. Now uh, we need to update trend, okay. So our trend was 40, but actually how much did the time series increase? Uh, the time series went from 100 to 155, okay. So there was an increase of 55 instead of an increase of 40. So, so let's do that. Okay. So actual increase minus 40 previous trend. Okay. This is the error term times beta. Okay. Times beta. And the updated trend then becomes 46. It's, it's a uh, rounded number, okay, uh, 46. So this is the updated trend. So now we have updated level, 
updated trend. So then we need to update seasonality. Okay. So to uh, uh, update seasonality, so seasonality, again, remember, uh, takes us from the trend line to the actual, okay? This is the uh, trend line, our, our point on the trend line, and this is the actual, okay? Uh, what takes us from 155 to 175? 20, okay? So that's our actual seasonality factor. However, we used 5, so we need to update 5. So this is the uh, error, this is gamma, okay? And the updated seasonality factor is then going to be 30. Again, a uh, rounded number, 30. So, so S5 will be 30. or 14. So again, um, uh, you can use these numbers uh, as an exercise. You, could, you can try to reproduce these numbers. Again, there will be some rounding errors. So, now, uh, the triple exponential smoothing can be uh, a little bit tedious and complicated and you might be wondering, is there a simpler way? Yes, and actually there are many other simpler ways. One of them is time series decomposition. Okay, so how does this work? Let me show you with an example. Again, here we have uh, the same time series as before, okay? And uh, at this point, um, we need to um, estimate that trend level, seasonality factors, etc. So one thing we can do is we may not want to go season by season. So let's say um, we want to we want to find a trend line and then seasonality factors okay so how can we look at this data set and find a trend line okay um, we can start with looking at uh, the slope of this line one way to find the slope of this line is uh, we can look at how much uh, the time series increases every four periods. Okay, let's say uh, uh, Q1, okay, 06 Q1, 07 Q1, 08 Q1, okay. So, how much does uh, the time series increase by from one season to the next season? So we can look at, okay, so we can say, uh, let's take the difference between uh, 06Q1 and 07Q1, okay? So first period of two consecutive seasons, how much did the time series go uh, increase by? Okay, uh, two thousand uh, one hundred seventy-five. So it's uh, this number minus seven thousand seven hundred thirty-eight. Okay, so over four periods, there was an increase of two thousand one hundred seventy-five. Okay, so then O seven Q two compared to 06Q2, okay, so 103,271 uh, minus 92,636, uh, 92, okay, there was an increase of 10,635 over four periods, and then uh, Q3 
of 07 compared to Q3 of 06, okay? So we calculate these differences, okay? And the average is 5,795. So the time series increases by 5,795 uh, over four periods, okay? So, so in a given period, one over four, uh, so we divide this uh, uh, annual increase by four, so on an average quarter, there will be an increase of 1,449, okay? So that's an estimate it's not the best estimate, it's not the worst estimate, it's one reasonably good estimate of uh, the slope of our trend line, okay? So, so we have a slope, but, but what's, the, uh, what's the starting point? What's the y-intercept? Uh, how do we find it? Well, we can eyeball it, okay? So let's look at the data. We know the trend, uh, we know the slope, okay? But what should be the y-intercept? Let's just say 80,000. What is the reason? The reason is, uh, why not, basically, okay? So then, uh, so we have, we start at 80,000, okay? And we add 1,449 every period. So for period one, okay, 80,000, uh, where is this? 80,000 plus 1,449. So, uh, that's our uh, trend line for the first period, and for the second period, we add another 1,449, and so on and so forth, okay? So this is our uh, trend line, okay? Now, then we need to find uh, our seasonality factors, okay? So, for seasonality factors, so the idea is we have a trend line. So how do we go from trend line to these points? Okay. So what we do there is uh, we divide the actual demand by the corresponding trend line. Okay. So. Uh, uh, for the first period, uh, what's the seasonality factor? Okay, so 70,738 divided by 81,449.87. Okay, that's the seasonality factor. That's the observed seasonality factor for period one, in season one. Let's look at the same period in season two. 72,913 divided by 87,244.84, okay? Uh, same period in season three, 85,857 uh, uh, divided by 93,039. This is the seasonality factor for uh, the first uh, period of the season. So we have three seasons and we have three seasonality factors for the first period in the season. And um, so which one should we use? We simply take the average. So for the first quarter of every season, for the first period of every season, uh, we take the average of 0 0.87, 0 0.84, and 0 0.92, okay? So that's going to be our seasonality factor 
for every period, for every first period in a season. For the second period, okay, we calculate the seasonality factor for period two in 06, in 07, and in 03. 08. Okay. So we take the average of the seasonality factors for the second period in uh, these three seasons. So these will be our uh, average seasonality factors. And then uh, uh, we can complete this uh, table. So the averages will be, uh, average seasonality factors will be, let's say, 0.88. So this is the average, that's the average, that's the average, that's the average, okay? So for, season, uh, for period two, 114, uh, 114, 114, okay, etc. And so we have uh, the trend line times our average seasonality factors. This is our uh, forecast, right? And this is called time series decomposition. And uh, the, uh, uh, the dashed line is our forecast, okay? And we have uh, time series data for three periods, three seasons. And for the fourth season, we just extend the, uh, uh, our time series decomposition forecast, and that's our forecast, okay? So again, time series decomposition is one of many ways uh, you can do this. You basically uh, separately calculate level, separately calculate trend, and separately calculate seasonality factors. Uh, this is in contrast to triple exponential smoothing where everything dependent on everything else. So you calculated level, trend dependent on the level, and the seasonality dependent on previous seasonality, etc. Here you decompose, you separate, you separate every component and estimate every component separately. You estimate level separately, trend separately, seasonality factors separately. Okay. So, uh, just in summary, what's our forecasting model? Our forecasting model is this. We start, so if we're at period T plus, uh, if you're at period T, and we're looking at uh, H periods ahead, maybe H is five, maybe 20 or whatever. So we're looking at H periods ahead. So this is our starting point level, 80,000 uh, times uh, however many periods we're looking into the future. So for each period, we add this uh, uh, slope. Okay, and then uh, this will give us a trend line times we need to look at seasonality. We have calculated these seasonality factors. So whichever one is appropriate, we apply that seasonality factor. Okay. So, so this concludes our discussion of time series decomposition. Thank you for watching.